Alright, here it is, my HSS style-ish shootout video. Hey guys, Tits Picanha. Um, I own this. It's an Ibanez AZ Prestige 2204N. I don't think it's the BK, I think that one is a white guard. Um, I got this because I started playing around with some folks and I needed a pretty versatile guitar and you know it's hard to beat versatility from a humbucker single single thing. You get the bluesy sound up there, you get your rock tones at the humbucker bridge pickup, a little more push as well. Uh, and then recently at the Village Guitars we've gotten a handful of other HSS style guitars in uh, that I thought why not compare them. How similar are they? Not not a ton. Uh, and then the price points vary pretty widely too. So, uh, you know, what better way to kind of put them side by side to justify some of these price jumps or not? Uh, you know, we all know about the law of diminishing returns with guitars. The more you spend, the less you might actually get for it after a certain point. So it was really great for me to hear all of these side by side. I learned a couple things from them. And uh, there's a couple hardware tweaks in between each different model that you may or may not like. Uh, I am going to need some notes for this because there is a lot to talk about between these two guitars. I will, three guitars. I will be brief. But, all right, so Ibanez AZ2204N in black. We have an alder body, roasted maple neck, rosewood fingerboard, all stainless steel frets. They're pretty big frets, too. I almost feel like they're too big for me, but you get used to it, right? Uh, Goto hardware, height adjustable locking tuners there. Uh, Goto bridge. I took the back plate off because Steve Vai signed it for me and I'm not going to ruin that. Seymour Duncan Fortuna pickups. What I have heard about these is that they're voiced to work really well with modeling amplifiers or, or modeling systems, your Line 6 Helixes, your Fractals, your Neurals. I actually used a Strymon Iridium today and I just left it on the round setting. I'll show you guys the different pedals that I used for the other sounds as well. Uh, classic Ibanez neck joint. It makes for a really comfortable handshake. You do always get the finish cracking on there, but I consider it a feature, not a defect at this rate. Uh, next up, Sir Classic Antique. Uh, this one we also have an alder body. Classic, what do you think? HSS, uh, splittable bridge, which is really handy, and it's a push-push. At first, I thought that was really weird, but then in the live application, it's actually nice not worrying about whether or not you are uh, able to get around your tremolo arm and pull the knob up. It's just like, hit it, and hit it again. Uh, nickel frets, they're a lot smaller than what's on the Ibanez. This is the 60s Classic C Profile. Uh, the, the Ibanez by far has the thinnest neck, and that's not really a surprise to me. It's not gem thin, but it's definitely got shades of that, of those dimensions. This feels like a small fender neck. It's definitely a C profile. Uh, tusk nut, where the Ibanez is bone. Uh, what hardware do they use? I forget. Let's check the handy dandy notebook. This is also Goto, so Goto 510. Uh, go to Kluzon tuner, so not locking, but they're the split post tuners, which, which do a pretty darn good job, honestly. Both of these guitars are looking at a 9-inch to 12-inch compound radius, so not a ton of difference in feel there. Uh, Sir is doing a lot of Pau Ferro on their fingerboards lately instead of Rosewood. I'll have to double check what this one is because I didn't actually write that down. And then V63 pickups across the board, right? No, V63 single coil pickups and an SSV in the bridge. It has SIR's passive noiseless system, which I think is really handy. Uh, so you get your five-way switch and a splittable bridge. So what, six, seven pickup combinations? Uh, the Ibanez runs away with it in terms of pickup combinations because of their Dynamics 9 system. You get nine different pickup options, which I do... Uh, blitz through real quick at the end of the video on just some simple chords. So let's get some glamour shots here. This one has some light antiquing on the body. They say it's light and it's pretty obvious. But it, it looks nice and you don't have to worry about it. That's one of my complaints about the gloss black guitars. It's like if you sneeze 
it's going to show it forever. But hey, they're tools. That is what they, it is what it is. Um, what else to say about this guy? <laughs> Sir, to me, has some of the smoothest frets I've ever played. Uh, it doesn't matter if they're nickel, it doesn't matter if they're stainless steel, whatever they're doing there to polish them is remarkable. They never hang over, they, you, they, you can't feel a single scratch on any band at all. It's, it blows my mind. Uh, not to say there aren't other great companies out there, but from what I've played so far, Sir runs away with it in that regard. Also a really great neck contour on this one. So you still get the classic squarish shape, but it's beveled diagonally this way so you get that more comfortable handshake compared to some classic 60s 50s styles electric guitars uh so that's a brief overview of the sir obviously i'm going to put way more specs in the description below and probably some overlays on the video so we'll we'll get to that uh and then lastly the paoletti now this has a much different story than uh either of the other two brands. You know, Ibanez has been around forever. Sir's been around a really long time, even back when he was building for Rudy Pensa in New York, then his Fender stuff. Paoletti has been around since 2005. Uh, if you're watching this video, you've probably heard of them. Uh, it's an Italian builder whose family used to make Chianti in Italy with giant 2,500 liter chestnut barrels. They don't make wine anymore. What do you do with all this wood? that's been sitting around for 130 to 170 years. Well, obviously you make guitars out of it because that's gonna sound different. So that's the reason for the heavy relicking. I'm not always big on relic guitars. I'm kind of like, you know, put, put your own stories on there. But with this wood being so old, it has a story to tell already. So I appreciate that they like to show that off instead. Uh, another big part of what they do is uh, they're reducing the plastic that they use on their guitars. So you get these brass pick guards and neck plates. Uh, this one's uh, nickel plated as well. So brass and nickel, you can get straight up brass. It's going to further antique as it gets older and you play on it and sweat on it or spill beer on it or whatever you're going to do or spill Chianti on it. Uh, shotgun shell knobs which is a nice touch, leave it to the Italians. Uh, I can say that I'm Italian, hence the big ring. And then five-way blade switch. Uh, one interesting detail, this pickup is not splittable. You can order them that way. On this specific model, it is not set that way. I do wish that was an option here, so you really are at the, the mercy of the five-way, and you can get your out-of-phase, single-coil, quacky tones in position two here. Um, tell me what you hear in between these guitars on the demos. I noticed a few differences. I think the neck pickups are all pretty similar to each other, but the humbuckers all have their own voice or their own punch and power. Um, let's talk a few more specs before I get away from here too. This is the biggest neck of these three guitars and it's by far the heaviest. I'm guessing the Ibanez and the Sur are both around high sevens, uh, seven pounds or so, mid sevens. This one's almost nine pounds. Yeah, I don't know if it's the wood. Obviously, a lot of it's got to be the metal as well. It's a much bigger neck. Um, and then, interestingly, this, this to me is more like a 50s guitar. It's a bigger neck. It has a truss rod, but you have to take the neck off to get to it. I don't love that fact. Some people like the nod to the old old way of doing things. Back to preference there, right? Um, all of these roasted maple necks. This one's Canadian maple. Uh, I've been as they have their Estec wood system, so I don't really know where the maple comes from, but it's roasted. Roasted maple on the Sir as well. Uh, this one also has the split post Cluzon style tuners. I didn't really have to retune any of these while I was sitting in here. Maybe a little bit, that doesn't matter. Because uh, if you play, you're gonna have to retune. So, how do they compare? I don't know, like, cost is the really big factor in a lot of this, right? So the, the Paoletti, you're looking over $4,000. The Sur, you're looking well over $3,000 and sometimes more than that. 
the Ibanez, you're topping out around $2,000. At least right now in, what month is it? February? February of 2024, that's about where these price points are. So is there enough of a difference from the Ibanez to these other guys to justify that extra fifteen to $2,400? It depends. It's up to you, right? There's, there's, you can never get a solid answer out of these people talking about guitars on YouTube because we're not you. Uh, for me, I like the story of the Paoletti. I think it sounds interesting and different. It has a different profile in those, those high mid, low high territories that give it an interesting kind of clarity. The feel is wild, and then you're going to get a one of a kind guitar with the finishes that they put on here. Uh, the Sir, it's remarkable. Even down to the packaging that they ship in, uh, they, they don't overlook any details. The Ibanez, they're really gunning for Sir in this model, if you ask me, with the smaller contours on the, or the smaller body, the contours that they put on the body, the appointments such as the stainless steel frets, the fretwork, the Godot hardware, the plethora of pickup positions. If you can't find a sound in that Ibanez, like maybe try a different instrument. My goodness. <laughs> but, uh, no, don't. We all need more guitars. Um, you know, it's down to what what's interesting to you. What what's which of these tools accomplishes the sound that you are looking for? Uh, I'll probably end up with. Eh, I don't want to say anything like that. So. While I've been speaking through all of this, I probably have some biases that are pretty obvious. Again, I own this Ibanez. I would love a Sir. I would love a Paoletti. I'm, I'm thinking of shaking some stuff up soon. We'll see what happens with that. And, you know, affordability is a big part of that discussion as well. Uh, but let me know what you think, guys. I'm going to stop talking because I've been going on forever. And comment below. Be nice or, or don't. I don't care. It's YouTube. That no one's nice. Uh, check out The Village Guitarist online. We're at thevillageguitarist.com. We also have a reverb shop. I'll link all of that below. See stuff on Instagram. Sometimes I post little dumb solos of these things on there. And uh, let me know what else you want to hear. Hope you stop by the shop sometime. We're out in Cedar Crest, New Mexico, right off I-40. Real easy to get to. And we try to make it fun and enjoyable for everybody. And uh, see you around sometime. Adios.